Shalom, it's day 117 of Read the Bible in a Year, and we are in 1 Chronicles, reading chapter 11 through 13, uh, page 858 in the scriptures if you're following along, otherwise it's somewhere else in the Bible if you're in a King James, New King James, or whatever. So yeah, if the light's too bright, sorry about that kind of need it um, early in the morning it's five o'clock so here we go and all Israel came together to David at Hebron saying see we are your bone and your flesh also in time past when Shaul was sovereign you were the one who led Israel out and brought them in and Yahweh your Elohim said to you Shepherd my people, Israel, and be ruler over my people, Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the sovereign of Hebron, and David made a covenant with them at Hebron before Yahweh. And they anointed David sovereign over Israel according to the word of Yahweh by Shemuel, or Samuel. And David and all Israel went to Jerusalem, which is... Yibis, where the the Jebusites, Jebusites, were the were the inhabitants of the land, and the inhabitants of Yibis said to David, "You do not come in here." But David captured the stronghold of Zion and the city of David. Or, excuse me. He captured the stronghold of Zion, the city of David. And David said, Whoever strikes the Yebusites first becomes chief and commander. And Joab, son of Saruah, went up first and became chief. And David dwelt in the stronghold, so they called it, called it the city of David. And he built the city around it, from Milo around about. And Joab revived the rest of the city. And David went on and became great, and Yahweh of hosts was with him. Excuse me. And these were the heads of the mighty men whom David had, who strengthened themselves with him in his reign, with all Israel, to set him up to reign over Israel according to the word of Yahweh. And this is the number of the mighty men whom David had. Yashoboam, or Yashoboam, hmm, son of uh, a Hakmonite, chief of the thirty. He had lifted up his spear against three hundred slain at one time. And after him was Eleazar, son of Dodo, the Ahohite. Aho who was one of the th one of the three mighty men? He was with David at Pas Damim, and the Philistines were gathered there for the battle, and a portion of the field was filled uh, with barley, and the people had fled before the Philistines, but they took their stand in the midst of that field and delivered it, and struck the Philistines, thus Yahweh saved them by a great deliverance. Goodness. You know what? Coffee syndicated. Verse 15. And three of the thirty chiefs went down to the rock of David into the cave of, of Adullam, while the army of the Philistines encamped in the valley of Rephaim. And David was then in the stronghold, and the watch post of the Philistines was in Bethlehem. 
And David longed and said, Oh, that someone would give me a drink of water from the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. And the three broke through the camp of the Philistines and drew water from the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. But David would not drink it, but poured it out to Yahuwah. And he said, Far be it from me, O my Elohim, that I should do this. Should I drink the blood of these men who have risked their lives? For at the risk of their lives they brought it, and he would not drink it. This is what the three mighty men did. And Abishai, the brother of Joab, was the chief of another three. And he had lifted up his spear against three hundred men who were slain and won the name among the three won a name among the three. Of the three, he was more esteemed than the other two men, so he became their head. However, he did not come to the first three. Benaya uh, was the son of Jehoiada, the son of a brave man from Kabseel, who had done many deeds. He struck two lion, who, two lion-like Moabites. He also went down and struck a lion in the midst of a pit on a snowy day, and he struck a Mitzrite, a man of great height, five cubits tall. Uh, five cubits tall, and in the Mitzrite's hand was a spear like a weaver's beam, and he went down to him with a staff and wrenched the spear out of the Mitzrite's hand and killed him with his own spear. This is what ben son of Jehoiada, did, and won a name among the three mighty men. See, he was more esteemed than the thirty. But he did not come to the first three. And David set him over his court, and the mighty men of the armies were uh, Asahel, uh, the brother of Joab, Elchanan, son of Dodo of Bethlehem, Shemoth the Hararite, Helets the Pelonite, Ira the son of Ikesh, the Tekavite, Abiezer, uh, the Anathothite, Sibakai, the Hushathite, Eli, the Ahohite, Maharari, Maharai, the uh, Netophathite, Heled, son of Baana, the Netophathite, um, Ethai, son of Rabbi, of Geba, of the children of Benjamin, Benaiah, the Pirathonite. I'm sorry, this is slow. I get it. Um, Harai of the Wadis of Gashan, Abiel, the Arbathite, Asmaweth, the Baharamite, Ella, uh, El Yaba, the Sha'albanite, the sons of Hashem, the Gizanite, Gizanite, Jonathan of uh, Shage, the Hararite, uh, Ahayim, Ahayim, uh, son of Sakar, the Hararite, Elathal, son of Ur, Hefer, the Mecherathite, Ahia, the Pelonite, Hetro, the Carmelite, Narari, son of Ezbi, Yoel, the brother of Nathan, uh, Mibar, son of Hagri, Selech, the Ammonite, uh, Nahari, the Barathite, the armor-bearer of Joab, son of Saruah. 
Okay, so Nahari the Barothite was the armor bearer of Yoab. Um, Ira, Yithrite, Gered, and Gered the Yithrite, Uriah the Hittite, Zabad son of Ahlai, Adina son of Shisha Rubenite, the Rubenite, the head of the Rubenites, and thirty with him, Hanan son of Ma'aka, and Jehoshaphat the Mithnite, Uzziah the Ashtarathite, Shema and Yael, the sons of Hotham the Ararite, uh, Yadai Yael, son of Shimri, and Yoha his brother, the Titsite, Eliel, the Mahalite, and uh, Yer Yerubai, the Yoshai, oh, Yerubai and Yoshaya, the sons of El Naam, Yithma and Yithma the Moabite, Eliel and Obed, and Yaasiel of Metzobayah. My goodness. It was, it was so good up until all the names. Okay, chapter 12. Now these are they who came to David at Ziklag while he was still hiding from Shaul, son of Kish, and there were among the mighty men helping the battle. Hmm. Armed with bows, using both the right hand and the left, with stones, with arrows, with bows of the brothers of Shaul of Benjamin, the chief was Ahiezer and Yoash, the sons of Shem Sh Shema'ah, the Gebethite and Yezael and Pelet, the sons of Azmaveth and Barakah and Yehu, the Anathothite and Yishmaiah. Oh my gosh, again, more. I can't do all these names. I don't want to do all these names. I'm going to skip down. To verse 8. And some Gadites separated themselves to David at the stronghold in the wilderness. Mighty, brave men trained for battle who could handle the shield and spear, whose faces were like the faces of the lions, whose faces were like faces of the faces of lions, who were as swift as gazelles on the mountains. Hmm. Some of the Gadites separated themselves to David at the stronghold in the wilderness, mighty brave men who trained for battle, who could handle the shield and the spear, whose faces were like the faces of lions. I wonder what that means. Anyways, um, and the, the, the reason why I say that is because, you know, there was a previous uh, verse that said, you know, the individual fought two lion-like men. Um, you know, and when you think of the idea of, like, Greek mythology, you have, like, uh, these mythical beings like the centaur, the minotaur, um, you know, half horse, half man, uh have like the lower body of a bull head of a bull torso of a man right stuff like that and these were evil creatures right but greek mythology in greece is taught as factual history like it actually happened so it's it's very interesting to say the least. So whenever you take a look at like 
you know, the Nephilim, these beings, and then, of course, the Moabites being uh, part of that Nephilim heritage, I, I suppose. So if they were like lion-like men, um, did they have features like lions is kind of the idea that I'm kind of getting across where the Nephilim blood has been uh, more or less diluted over time, but these features are still there. Um, so, yeah, food for thought. Anyways, all right. Let's see. Uh, verse 9. Is there the chief, Obadiah the second, Eliab the third, Mishmanah the fourth, Yermiah the fifth, Atai the sixth, Eliel the seventh, Yohanan the eighth, Elzabad the ninth, Yermiyahu the tenth, Mok, uh, Makbanai the eleventh. These are the these were from the sons of Gad, chiefs of the army. Uh, the least was over a hundred, the greatest was over a thousand. Uh, these were the ones who passed over the Yarden in the first new moon when it was overflowing all its banks and put to flight all those in the valleys to the east and to the west. And some of the children of Benjamin and Judah came to David at the stronghold. And David went out from the went out to the face of them and answered and said to them, If you have come peaceably to me to help me, my heart shall be united with you. But if you but if to betray me to my enemies, there is no violence in my hands. Let the Elohim of our fathers see and reprove. Then the Spirit came upon Amasai, chief of the officers, yours, O David, and with you, O son of Jesse, peace, peace to you and peace to your helpers. For your Elohim shall help you, and David received them and put them among the chiefs of the raiding band. And some, of, uh, and some from Manasseh went over to David when he was going uh, with the Philistines to battle against Saul. But they did not help them, for the princes of the Philistines took advice and sent him away, saying he might go over to his master Saul with our heads. When he went to Siglag, uh, those of Manasseh who had went over to him were Adna and Yozabad and Yediel, Yediel and Mikael and Yozabad and Eli, Elihu, and Silithai, chiefs of the thousands who were from Manasseh. And they helped David against the raiding bands, for they were all mighty brave men, and they were commanders in the army. For at that time they came to David day by day to help him, until it was a great army like an army of Elohim. And these were the numbers of the chiefs of those who were armed for battle and, and came to David at Hebron to turn over the reign of Shaul to him, according to the word of Yahuwah. Of the children of Judah bearing uh, shield and spear, 6,800 armed for battle. Of the children of Shimon, Mighty brave men for the army, 7,100. Of the children of Levi, 4,600. And Jehoiada, the leader of the Aaronites, Aharonites, and with him, 3,700. And Zadok, a young man, a 
mighty brave men from his father's house, 22 commanders, and the children of Benjamin, relatives of Shaul, 3,000. Until then, the greatest part of them guarded the charge of the house of Shaul and the children of Ephraim, 20,800 mighty brave ones, men of name throughout their father's house. 20,800 just from the tribe of Ephraim. And the half tribe of Manasseh, 18,000 who were designated by name to come and set up David to reign. Wow. Designated by name. They're like, hey, they were called out. Hey, you're going. Which meant something more than anything. And the children of Issachar, uh, who had understanding of the times to know what Israel should do, their chiefs were 200, and all the brothers acted at their mouth. Of Zebulon, uh, there were 50,000 going out to the army, arranging battle with all weapons of battle, giving support with undivided heart. Hmm. So they were all in unison. They had one heart and one mind. That's good, especially for battle. And of Naphtali, 1,000 commanders, and with them, 37,000 with shield and spear. And of the Danites, arranging battle, 28,600. And of Asher, excuse me, and of Asher going out to the army, arranging battle, 40,000. And of the Reubenites and the Gadites of the half in the half tribe of Manasseh from beyond the Jordan, uh, 120,000 armed for battle with every kind of weapon of battle. All these men of battle, keeping rank, came to Hebron with a perfect heart to set up David to reign over all Israel. And all the rest of Israel were of one heart to set up David to reign. And they were there with David three days eating and drinking for their brothers had prepared for them. And also those who were near to them from as far away as Issachar and Zebulun and Naphtali were bringing food on donkeys and camels on, on mules and cattle. Food, uh, food of flour, cakes of figs, cakes of raisins, uh, wine and oil and cattle and sheep in great quantities, for there was joy in Israel. Chapter 13. And David consulted with the commanders of thousands and hundreds, and every leader, and David said to all the assembly of Israel, If it seems good to you, and if it is of Yahweh your, our Elohim, let us send out to our brothers everywhere who are left in all the land of Israel and with them to the priests and the Levites who are in their cities of their open lands and let them be gathered to us and let us break the ark of, I'm sorry, let us bring the ark of our Elohim back to us for we sought him not since the days of Shaul. And all the assembly agreed to do so, for the matter was right in the eyes of all the people. So David assembled all Israel from Shehor and Mitzrayim to as far as the entrance of Hamath to bring the Ark of Elohim from Kiriath Yearim. And David and all Israel went up to Baalah to Kiriath Yearim of Judah. <clears throat> to bring up from there the Ark of Elohim. Um, to bring up from there the Ark of Elohim, Yahor, 
who dwells between the cherubim or the cherubim where the name is called on. And they placed the Ark of Elohim on a new wagon from the house of Abinadab and Uzzah and Ahio were leading the wagon. And David and all, all Israel were playing before Elohim with all their might and with songs and with lyres and with harps and with tambourines and with cymbals and trumpets. And when they came to the threshing floor of Kidon, Uzzah put out his hand to hold the ark, for the oxen stumbled. Then the wrath of Yahuwah burned against Uzzah and struck him, because he did put his hand to the ark, and he died there before Elohim. And David was displeased, because Yahuwah had broken out against Uzzah. Therefore, that place is called Peretz Uzzah until this day. And David was afraid of Elohim that day, saying, How shall I bring the ark of Elohim to me? So David did not take the ark with him to the city of David, but took it aside into the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. And the ark of Elohim remained with the house of Obed-Edom in his house, three new moons, and Yahuwah blessed the house of Obed-Edom. Oh, that's what it says. And all that he had. All right, guys. That's 11, 12, and 13. Yep. And tomorrow we'll read 14, 15, 16. Shalom.